Hey everyone, Hack Luke here. Today, we're going to be taking a little bit of a trip down memory lane for me. We're going to be talking about the penetration testing with Kali Linux, PWK, also known as the OSCP or the Pen 200 course, but I'm just going to call it the OSCP because that's what most people know it as. Just to be clear though, PWK is the course name, OSCP is the certification name, Pen 200 is the course code. So any of them kind of work in the context, talking generally about the thing. Anyway, doesn't matter. Basically, they've just released a big update to this course. And I did it back in 2017. So there's actually been a couple of big updates to this course. But back in 2018, just after I'd passed my OSCP in early 2018, I released a three-part blog series about my experiences with the OSCP. And it really blew up at the time and I think it got like over 300,000 views and um, it's it's still getting lots of views every month but I feel a little bit bad because the actual content in those blogs is a bit outdated now and uh, some of it won't be relevant to people who are taking the OSCP today. So it's about time I made a video about the course updates I think and that's what this video is. Now I've had a read through the, the blog post that Offensive Security released about the updates, which I'm going to link in the description below. Uh, I've also been given access to the OSCP, which is exciting because it's been a while. And I want to go and have a look at, at, at some of the changes in the course. But this video, I'm just going to speak more generally about the changes that they've made and what I really truly think about them. I mean, Offensive Security did ask me to make this video, but you can be rest assured they didn't tell me uh, what to say in the video. And um, I'm not someone who kind of um, says things that I don't believe in anyway. So um, this is going to be a really honest opinion. Having said that, there's not a lot negative I have to say about offensive security. I mean, when I did the course back in 2017, it really launched my career in cybersecurity. And uh, having that OSCP title on my resume, I'm pretty sure is is actually what got me the job as a as my first penetration testing job, you know, coming out of a web development background. So I don't have a lot negative to say about it. Um, I will say though that when I did the course, a lot of the stuff in the course wasn't really aligned with the knowledge that I needed to have as a penetration tester. And I'm going to go through some examples of that. Um, but now the course has been updated and actually it seems like they've really focused on taking the bits out that aren't relevant to basically being able to run a penetration test. And they've put in a bunch of modules that look like they're going to be a lot more practical if you're just if, if you're going to be sat down in a penetration tester's chair and, and have to do the job when you're finished. Without further ado, let's go into some of the specific changes that have been made to the OSCP course. Now I'm going to give you a little sneak peek into the offensive security portal and how the new training is structured. So if you sign up for any offensive security training course, the first thing that you're going to get access to is this portal. So you'll log in with your details. You'll see that um, I'm logged into my account here. And then if you want to see the courses that you have access to, you just click this tab and you click whichever course you want. So in this case, we're looking at the Pen 200 2023 version. And when you click onto that, you get this list of topics. So you can check out every topic that's included within the course. But there's also this separate way to view the course, and that is by videos only. So it gives you this great interface just to view the videos. So if you want to go enumerating windows and whatever subsection in here, you can just click into that and watch the video that's associated with that subsection. You can also pick the playback speed, which is really, really great. I've been frustrated before by doing some courses that don't allow you to change the playback speed of videos. It's an absolute must if you're wanting to get through the course quickly. The way that I would actually be doing this course is by going to the topics. So if I go to topics and then go down to the common web application attacks, you can see that it's a text version of the course here including all of the commands and everything. By the way, these look like images, but you can copy and paste the commands, which is really useful for just saving time, I suppose. But if you want to see the video, you don't have to go back into the video section and pick your video. You can just click this little play button here on whichever section you're in, and it will bring up a little modal with a video in a smaller window, which is super useful. So you can watch the video, follow along with the text at the same time. And another cool feature is, 
If you want to take your own personal notes on each topic, well, you can do it right here. So they split the notes up into either section, topic, or course. In this case, the section is directory traversal, the topic is common web application attacks, and the course is an overall section to keep all of your notes for the PWK course. You want to add a note, you just uh, click add note, put whatever note you want in here, and then click save. And that will save that there for next time you revise on this course. At the end of the text sections, you'll notice that there are exercises. So you put in your answer here, and once you get the correct answer, it'll notify you that it's correct. And remember, if you do enough of these, you might get some bonus points to help you pass the exam at the end. But we'll touch on that later. They've taken some modules out and they've put some new modules in. And I think for anyone taking the course, you know, this is probably the most exciting update. So I'm just gonna list the modules that they're taking out. And while I'm reading this list, you're probably gonna go, what, how could they take that out? That is so important to know for some of them, but I'll explain why in a second. So they're taking out getting comfortable with Kali Linux. Okay, command line fun, practical tools, bash scripting, introduction to buffer overflows, Windows buffer overflows, Linux buffer overflows, file transfers, and PowerShell Empire. Nine modules they're taking out. So um, some of those modules, five of them to be exact, and that is getting comfortable with Kali, command line fun, practical tools, bash scripting, and file transfers. They're taking them out of the OSCP because they're actually going to be included in the PEN 100 course, which is the Network Penetration Testing Essentials course. And um, I think that makes a lot of sense because, you know, if you're going to sit down and you're going to do the OSCP, I think there is some prerequisite knowledge that you probably should have. And I think things like using the command line and um, knowing some basic, basic bash scripting, that's probably some stuff that you want to know before you start the OSCP. So then you're not wasting your time in the OSCP labs. And, um, you know, also offensive security now has kind of changed the way that they sell courses. When I did my OSCP, I think you just bought the course. So you bought lab time and an exam attempt, and that was, you know, a certain price with a package. But now you buy, you buy learning subscriptions, they call them. So, you know, you can, if, if, if you know that you're a beginner and you're going to need the, the, the fundamentals course, well, you just buy a subscription that would include pen 100 and pen 200 so that you can kind of do the whole lot. And um, I think that's a much better way to do it, honestly, because, you know, you know what level you're up to. So if you're an intermediate you level or an advanced level, you just want to get your OSCP certification. Well, you can do that. But if you know that you're going to need a bit of handholding to kind of get up to the right level to start your OSCP, you can do that as well. So I think that's really cool. The buffer overflow modules are going to be moved into a different area of the offensive security learning library. Um, and I think that's a good idea. I really enjoyed learning about buffer overflows when I did the course, but I haven't used it once as a penetration tester. You're unlikely as a penetration tester to be writing buffer overflow exploits from scratch. And even if you were, the types of buffer overflows that were covered in OSCP were totally vanilla buffer overflows that don't have any kind of like memory protections and things like that, which is super unlikely to occur in 2023 um, because there's a bunch of protections now, which, which you know, would stop you from doing that anyway. So while it's kind of good uh, foundational knowledge to have if you want to get into exploit development, Maybe it doesn't fit in the OSCP course. So I kind of agree with that decision. Now, let's have a chat about which modules are in. So as a penetration tester, you are going to do a lot of web application penetration tests, right? And I think uh, web application knowledge is something that was definitely in the OSCP even five years ago, but it wasn't a really heavy focus, if I'm honest. But now they have expanded the web application section to include introduction to web applications, common web application attacks, and SQL injection. So it's really good that they're putting a heavier focus on web apps because honestly, working as a pen tester in a company, I reckon probably 80 plus percent of my penetration tests were web applications. That's just the most common thing that people want to have tested. They're also um, including a privilege uh, they're expanding the privilege escalation section into 
Windows privilege escalation and Linux privilege escalation. And I remember when I did my OSCP and I was in the kind of the chat forums and everything like that. Like the thing that people had the most issue with was Windows privilege escalation. And I think it's because while they did have a section on that in the course, um, it wasn't as detailed as I would have liked it to be. So you had to figure out a lot of stuff yourself. So I think it's a really good move from OSCP. There was a section in the original one called port redirection and tunneling. That's being expanded now into a few different ones called port redirection, SSH tunneling, and tunneling through deep packet inspection. And I found this like a really cool part of the OSCP course or the PWK course when I did when I did it. Um, it's really cool that they're expanding that. And that is something that is actually, I feel like it's an underappreciated art being able to um, tunnel your traffic, um, especially when you're doing things like internal network tests and, and you're tunneling through different subnets and things like that. I feel like it's an underappreciated art, even though I haven't used it all that much um, in my pen tests. When I have used it, it's been super useful. And also it's good just to be able to set it up for your own practical usage. For example, if you want to run you know, Burp Suite or um, Kaido or something like that in the cloud. It's good to be able to tunnel your traffic and, and know how to do that kind of thing. Um, and then one of the glaring things that were missing in the OSCP back when I did it was um, Active Directory attacks. So as a pen tester, I say most of them were web apps. When they weren't web, app, web apps, like most of them were internal network penetration tests, which is where you basically sit down. It's almost always a standard enterprise Windows network. And, um, you know, kind of you want to get as much coverage as possible on the internal Windows network. But one of the key findings that, or one of the key things that you want to check is whether you can get access to the uh, domain controller or a domain ad admin account. And um, when you can do that, you can basically control everything. You can add users, add your own employee user or admin user, uh, read people's emails even, things like that, depending on how it's set up. So um, that's a really, really important part of being a penetration tester is being all over the internal network stuff. Um, and Active Directory is a huge part of that. So they've now expanded the Active Directory section into Active Directory Introduction and Enumeration attacking Active Directory authentication and lateral movement in Active Directory. So I think that's really, really cool. I think those are all great updates. Another update that has graced the OSCP course is the Challenge Labs. And uh, I remember back when I did the PWK in the labs, it was just basically you VPN into this big lab environment and there's all of these different boxes that you can hack into. And uh, what would happen, of course, is there are a lot of hackers in there at the same time. They're all hacking the same boxes. And sometimes you'd be trying to hack into a box and it wasn't actually in a vulnerable state because whoever hacked into it previously had, you know, crashed the service that's supposed to be vulnerable or they fixed the vulnerability somehow. Or sometimes you'd exploit a box and then, or, or, or you'd half exploit a box or something and then someone would leave a spoiler on the box in a text file or, or they'd leave the flag there or whatever it is. So having your own environment when you're hacking and and an environment where you're sure that the boxes in a state are in a state that are vulnerable and, and meant to be exploited is actually really helpful to the learning experience. So that's what they've done. The challenge labs allow you to spin up uh, one or two boxes that are in a vulnerable state and you can attack them in the way that you're meant to attack them and you know which box to attack. So you learn those fundamentals. And then towards the end, then you spin up your big target rich environment where you can attack uh, full networks instead of attacking individual boxes. I think that's a much better way to do it, right? For for any frustrated OSCP learners out there who kept getting um, thwarted by the other hackers in the network. And honestly, it is a really fun environment to be hacking in, but in terms of like learning experience, it's probably better just to have your own boxes. So really happy to see that update here. There's also an update to the exam. Uh, what used to happen in the exam is you would get access to five different boxes and your goal was to get the flag.txt file on each box, which was basically a boot to root. So you'd have the box and then you'd have to exploit it somehow and then you'd have to escalate your privileges to root and then you'd be able to read the flag. Uh, and you'd have to do that five times within the space of 24 hours. Now that hasn't changed. 
But what has changed is there is no longer a buffer overflow box. So there was always one machine in the exam that was a buffer overflow box. Now that's gone because there's no buffer overflow in the course anymore. So that makes total sense. The way that you get bonus points now is you complete at least 80% of the modules exercises, which is on this like online web app where uh, the whole course content is. And you also need to submit at least 30 proof.txt hashes. So that's how you get the bonus points now. And you know, you don't need to get the bonus points, uh, but it can help you to pass the exam if you are, are struggling to, to get enough kind of uh, hacking done during the exam window, then bonus points can just get you over the line. But you know, if you feel experienced enough and to just hack the boxes, then you don't actually need to do any of the module work. You could just take the exam. That's how OSCP works. All right. That just about sums it up. The only thing left to do is if you want more details, there's a blog that Offensive Security released and I've linked it in the description. And uh, you can get the full syllabus. Also, there's a button down the bottom that says download the Pen 200 PWK syllabus. So you just click that and then it'll download the, the full syllabus and you can check out what else is in the PWK course. You can also take a look at the first PWK module. So you can really decide if you like that kind of learning style and uh also an important thing to note is if you've just started the oscp around the release time of this video or uh you know you started a couple of months before and you're not sure if those changes apply to you or not there's like a full schedule with all of the details and the release plan of the new course here so different parts being released at different times it's, it's kind of a complex thing to transition over to the new course so check that out and uh let me know what you think I'm keen to th hear what people think of the new course. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you think there should be other changes? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, Hack Luke, signing out. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.